Hello there, welcome to a brand new mock building series here on the channel. I think honestly, this is going to be my breaking point on the channel. So I've just finished recording Tuesday's video. It is Monday the 28th of April and I'm having so many tech difficulties. I've just decided to pick up my camera, start it now because of course, before we build any new mock, which I'll talk about in a second, we do have to break apart the old one. Now, I don't know about you, but I think there's a load, a load, a lot of studs on this and it's gonna take me a while. So I was aiming to start this in May. I think I'll try to finish breaking this, I say finish, I haven't started it. I think I'll try to break this down today and tomorrow. If I can get all the studs off it today, and then by tomorrow, it just leaves me the rest of the pieces to sort, which I do have my fiance helping with that. She did help put all the studs and order them in a random order in the first place. So it's not gonna be too hard. It's just a daunting process. So I'm gonna get on that. That will be today and tomorrow. I'll include a few highlights. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to record for this video because I aim to about weekly do an update to where I'm at. And then hopefully, after four weeks show off my mock if it's finished if not perhaps it'll take a bit longer but my aim is to have this finished by the end of may because there are a few others that i want to do this year i know i'm not going to get them all done but hopefully i can get most of them done anyway as i said today i'll be breaking it apart and then my plan for this week i do actually have a file so i'll probably leave this on the side of the screen dependent if there is enough room because i'm not even able to seat myself at the minute so who knows how this footage will go but my plan for this week is to break it down and then hopefully wednesday i'll be able to plan where i want the submarine to go and what i want the scene to actually look like thursday i'm aiming to build the frame of it and then friday just fill in a bit of the frame make it look like the actual ship so hopefully this does go well again i have no idea my expectations are rock bottom for this so i hope you do enjoy it sit back relax and have fun because there's definitely going to be a lot of fun this month this will be on top of my normal daily uploads so i am also uploading a video i guess about six days a week and then one of them weekly videos will be another update with all the progress throughout the week some days i might not do anything but I'll definitely still try to record an update just to know where my headspace is around this because I think that's very important when doing a mock. This is the behind the scenes before you've even seen the build. So I'll update you later once I have taken the studs off and see how much we get done today because that determines A, how much I am doing tomorrow and B, how quickly we can start building the Naboo Bongo because that is the mock that I will be building for May. I'm pretty sure this was a February mock, so hopefully in two months time there'll be another one. But again, depends how quickly I can build the Bongo. But the Bongo is the submarine that Qui-Gon Kenobi and Jar Jar ride from Otagunga to the capital city of Naboo. Which of course is Theed and they do get chased by a few bigger fish along the way. It'd be very nice if I can include some part of the bigger fish, but again... We'll have to wait and see how this goes along. But I think that's a good enough intro because honestly, it does just sum up how this series is going to go. So if you do end up enjoying, please do drop a like on this video. It helps me out a ton and encourages me to keep going through this series and subscribe for more awesome Lego content such as this and other mocks that I build here on the channel. Either way, I hope you enjoy and hopefully this series does well enough that encourages me to keep making more because eventually I would like to get another Smiths display for my Star Wars figures and perhaps then use this extra space to build bigger mocks and one day, who knows, I could be building as big a mocks as David from Solid Bricks because I followed his Geonosis building and I actually really liked his Mandalore one. And that's sort of what's inspired me to do this. So once we got the more space, we will be attacking Clone Wars. But for 25 years of Lego Star Wars and 25 years of The Phantom Menace, Lego haven't done much for 25 years of The Phantom Menace. So this bongo is something that I do want to do. Mini figure scale and we are going all in. So hopefully by the end of May, we have something to show for all this hard work. In case you haven't seen the original video where I built this and 
showed it off at many different angles. You can see here just how many studs actually went into this. And this isn't all of them because there are countless used on all the pod racers down here. So I definitely urge you to check out that video if you haven't already. And hopefully this gives you a good example of just how much work went into this. Hopefully I'll have nothing as repetitive in the bongo, but I'm sure there'll be something that's just as complicated and just as awkward to do. But this time I definitely have the tools I need. And speaking of tools, especially ones that I needed when I was doing all these studs and stacking them, I've actually printed off this very handy device. So what it is, is just a PLA shell, got a TPU tip on it, and it actually houses two official Lego brick separators. So it looks like an actual hammer, and this will just allow me to tap in all the Lego plates without damaging them. You can see my printer didn't properly finish the last layer on that TPU hammerhead, but it actually works because it's just gonna be wrecked by the Lego bricks anyway. So I have screwed this together. This is nice and solid, and hopefully this will help me if I've got any repetitive tiles or especially the bricks for the bases, instead of wearing down my thumbs, which are worn down by separating all these studs anyway, it will just help me knock them into place and make it much easier. But before I go and make dinner, because this is taking hours and I knew it would take as long as it is, I first have started breaking all these studs off and piling them here and then trying to build these towers to go into my stud drawer. You can see, since I put this together and used up all my studs that were available, I have sorted through the rest of my Lego. So I have a few more studs there than I did before. And over here, we have all of the other studs that just have the hole in them and they go in a separate drawer. But hopefully I can finish this after dinner. I will have one final update for today, but just a tip if you are separating studs and trying to pile them together, definitely whack a base plate underneath them because it just makes it so much easier to tower on. And then when they reach probably about the height of this white one, you can just pull them off, add them to the pile. And I guess I'm gonna have to add that to the work to do because I need to empty that so I can fit all of these tubes of colors. It's so much easier going to the drawer and grabbing a tube if you need a certain color, especially when building a big mock you might need a few more for so hopefully that helps and i cannot wait to start using this hammer the green and purple were just the colors i had available and honestly they work so well with the orange it just looks like a toy hammer but whilst i was working this i did catch up on brixy studio it does look amazing hopefully who knows one day perhaps perhaps not even a studio but perhaps we'll have our own room dedicated to lego and I can just shelf it out for all the sets, but I'm gonna go have dinner and get back to this afterwards, and I'll let you know if I manage to complete it today. So it's nearly four hours later, and I am just about done for the day, but as you can see, I have sorted that whole drawer of studs, so I'm so happy with that. I did kind of give up towards the end, so the ones with the holes aren't necessarily sorted by color, but I mean, just compare it to the other drawer. There's not too many of them. I will need to tackle my translucent pieces. That will be not only another day, that will probably be another month. I don't think I'm doing that anytime soon, unless I need a load of them for the sort of underwater coral. But the first day has been successful. I've still got all these parts to put away. I'm gonna do that just after I record. And though I haven't used my trusty hammer yet, I'm looking forward to just tap down all of the bricks with it for the new mock. I think this looks really, really cool. So perhaps I'll leave the designs for this somewhere in the description. It's not my design. This is something I've, I guess, borrowed off someone online, but I'll now be putting away these slopes and I think we're on good track tomorrow to finish taking apart Moss Esper, I guess. And Hopefully that means May 1st we'll be able to start building the Naboo Bongo. So it is day two and I'm quite happy with the work I did yesterday. I have just finished recording my releases video for the 1st of May and there are some really, really good sets that have only just been announced. But today my aim 
is to try and break down the rest of Mock S. But I think I can get it done today. I don't really have much else that I'm planning to do. Of course, the releases video only took me about an hour to record. So that was quite nice and easy and means I can just focus it for the rest of the day. But I also realized yesterday, besides the terrible lighting, and I mean, the sun hasn't exactly come out today, so I don't know if this is gonna be any better. They didn't really break down my plan for how it's going to go because there's a few different things like, well, how do I know I'm going to have the frame finished in a day and how do I know I'm going to do this? And the reason I've picked the certain days for certain things is because I roughly know from building other mocks and other mocks that have taken a few days, my process of what I go through. And I think I also did jot down a day for my pieces to arrive. I do need to be ordering them by the end of the week. And hopefully when I've got the frame, I'll know what pieces I have in mind. And that shouldn't take more than a week. So I've dedicated the end of next week to looking at the pieces. I'll probably include a whole separate day for that because I'm not expecting to need them straight away, of course. If I do end up needing some bricks, that probably will change. And if the order hasn't arrived by then, that's sort of the day that I'll go out and buy a set with the pieces I need. So that is roughly how I've gone through my schedule and just made sure I'm not building too much on a day where I've got a big video because I do still want to get some other builds done in May. But hopefully today we can break down the rest of Mock Esper here. I'll probably start with the pod racers and... The back is just mostly panel pieces and slopes. So that should be pretty quick. And I'll update you once I have finished with what I've done. And hopefully later we can look at an empty base plate. So it's not quite an empty base plate. I have kept all my supports that I used. I basically mills plated this mock because it made the base so sturdy and just kept everything on a plane. I'm definitely going to be doing it for the next mock. But I also want to try and create some crevices. But we'll get into that probably tomorrow hopefully when I'm building up the frame of the entire thing and I actually left the pod racers till last my fiance helped me break down the rest of the set in fact she basically did all the hard work and I just helped her sort it into the drawers so big thank you to her for that and as you can see some of my drawers are actually overflowing and it's gotten pretty bad especially with these one by twos these were the one by two plates from the crowd with all the studs on them and yeah, there's no way I'm squeezing these in the drawer, at least not and getting it back open again the next time. This hammer was somewhat helpful in getting the pieces apart, but the only problem I found with it is if the piece was right near a plate or was flat on a base, you couldn't really tilt it. So I do still have a trusty brick separator to go along with it, but between the two of them, they're going to make mock building the bongo much, much easier. So... I'll probably save these drawers to do for tomorrow. I'm not looking at getting an early start on recording, so I'll probably update this before I've even recorded tomorrow's video. Well, you've already seen the video by now, but I'm probably going to end up doing the karmas because I've got a few more materials. So these are all going to stay on the base plate. The base plate, I'm afraid, won't be empty until we are, well, until I decide to break apart this marker, I guess, because I don't know what color I'm going to use for the base. It makes sense to be sandy, but it's also quite dark, so I don't want the sand lighting it up too much. I'll probably have a look and see what other underwater Lego mocks have been made and see what I think will be best for the bongo. But that will be for tomorrow. It is getting very late now, so I'm going to kick back, relax, and just take my mind off Lego. And then tomorrow, we start building the frame and getting a look at what the bongo is meant to look like so that is all for today but i'm very happy to have the moss esper finally broken down so we can start building the bongo hello there it is day three of building the bongo and as you might just be able to see behind me i do have an old republic ship i have no idea what i'm doing with that i don't want to break it down but at the same point it doesn't really fit on any of my shelves, but today I will be trying to build the base of the bongo. So sort of the underwater scene and framing out where I want the bongo to actually go. It's gonna be the rough draft, if you will, of this mock. And honestly, I have no idea how I'm gonna start. So I am gonna be recording tomorrow's video later on and focusing on the mock today, because I think this is one of the key elements of the mock. Now, that being said, I also still don't know if I'm going to go with the sandy tan or more of a dark grey. I've looked at a few mocks, 
I think I'm probably teetering towards the sandy colour because it just makes sense for the bottom of a big ocean. I'll probably add some rocks, some darker colours coming out of it. So it'll be a mix of the two and hopefully I can get the base together more or less today. But again, I don't really know what I'm going to be doing today. It is the first day, so I don't know if this is even going to continue into the build or if tomorrow I'm going to wake up and decide to do something different. Hopefully I've got a good update today. I have now edited the first two. So far, so good. I am really enjoying this series, even though we're technically at the first official date today, but hopefully you're enjoying the video. Once again, if you are, drop a like if you are enjoying and subscribe for more awesome content and so that you don't miss the other episodes of this. I hope to get them out weekly. And as I said, there should be another three or four more and then I'll do a showcase video separately showing it off and I won't include that at the end of one of these videos. So hopefully later on you'll see what progress I have made. So it might not look like I've done a lot, but I think this is quite important progress that has been made today. You can see I've gone with three colours for the base. I've kept the grey and the sandy tiles from last time. I don't think I've needed any extra plates, perhaps the odd 2x4 just to fill a gap. And then I've got this dark tan area here. This dark tan is pretty much how it's going to look in a few weeks. I don't think I am going to be changing anything about the front of this mock because this is meant to represent the darker water. I was going to do it blue and whack a few tiles there, but I think that will confuse what's underwater and not. So I've got some dark tan, which is the dark depths of the Naboo River. And then we've got some sandy platforms here that I am going to build up have a few spikes like you can see on this image that I've sort of got for a bit of inspiration. I have a few of these saved on my computer and that's what I want to create on this base. So I'll have a few cone-like structures. Hopefully I can have a big one in the middle which will be supporting the bongo but that will be made much much later because it depends how heavy this bongo is. I might need to have a few of these growing up but I've also got this little platform here because it's not going to be regular, it's a jagged edge at that. There's going to be some wedge plates coming in and out of this line as well, much like the old rock wall that was part of the Lego City. And then I'm also going to have a few bits up here and then a bunch of sea life in the middle. If you remember my schedule at the start of the video, there is going to be a whole day or probably even a few days dedicated to adding different sea life and probably brick building most of it. So I'm looking forward to completing that. I have actually started sorting out the 1x2s from yesterday that were just too big for the drawers. If you remember, these were the drawers that they were in originally, and I can actually fit more in here. It doesn't look like it because of I've basically taken all of the ones from the front and it's taken up, what, nearly two thirds of it. But I can actually go a bit higher with these, and they're just much easier to store the bricks in. As you can see, with the 1x2s, I have then whacked a few dividers so that they don't all crumble when I take one of the towers out and mix up. I've just got all this to salt and you can see off camera I did get very distracted and ended up building the new May 4th gift with purchase that I'll be using for tomorrow's video as I am recording it which would be uploaded yesterday when this video is live. So definitely check that out if you haven't already because I also built one of my favourite childhood sets. In fact this is one of three that I didn't break down until I guess eventually I needed the parts for something. So I think they're both very cool sets. There's definitely problems with them both, but again, watch that video if you are interested. So all I'm going to do tonight is stud out the outline of the bongo, just so I know how big it is. I know the towel won't fit on here because the towel itself is actually something crazy like 30, 40 studs long. So I'm probably going to have that coming off to the side towards either the minifigures or out the back of the stand. But hopefully I can get the outline finished. I know the rough length and depth of the ship or the length and width, the cross section, and I'm just going to have an outline. But I'll probably show you that tomorrow because I'm going to be doing that pretty late. And I don't think there is anything else. But of course, I also need to sort out this mess. So I'll show you what I got done tonight, tomorrow morning, and hopefully we can start building the frame of the Naboo Bongo. Hello there, it is now day four, I think. I'm going to be terrible keeping count of that as we go on. And I have outlined what frame I will be building today. But first off, 
I've just finished recording my Platoon Attack Craft video where I add a bunch more droids onto this. So if you are interested in that, definitely check it out and be sure to head over to the show, as I say in the video, to check out an alt for the AAT polybag, which is really, really cool. But now let's get it to the desk and I'll show you what I stayed up doing last night. So this is the outline of the bongo that I've built. And as you can see, it's two studs away from 48 at the close end. And then we go all the way back and it's like six studs over. So it's four studs on top of the 48 wide base plate. It's 52 studs long. The towel itself from this cross point here going back is actually 30 studs. I think I said 30, 40 in yesterday's update, but it is exactly 30 studs long. I think it's something like nine meters in real life, which is absolutely crazy. And I've also marked out roughly where I think things should go. I spent so long digging out this anchor. I don't have a blue one or a gray one, but I got this black one last year in one of them VIP packs and I put it away just for this occasion. But since then, I've sorted out the drawer so much and mixed around different parts and swapped where things are. It took me most of the time just finding this. I've also mocked out where I want the seats to go, where Jar Jar, Kenobi and Qui-Gon will be sitting and also the rough shape of the bongo. It sort of goes in, then curves round, and then sort of goes back out. I hope you can make sense of that. So quite happy with how it is. Also rounding off them back corners is a must. And we've also got as part of the towel, a bit of an engine, which will go there. And then I will be brick building. Originally, I was gonna add the bars to the order that I'm hopefully gonna make by the end of well, hopefully by the end of this video, hopefully tomorrow, once we've got the frame and started to fill it in, I'll know what I want to order. But that will probably be part of the next video because first off, we do have to build the frame today and how I'm gonna get this to stay, I have no idea. I might delve a little bit into Technic. I know there's definitely ways I can do this without using Technic, but I think especially just for that long bit at the back, if I just have a Technic bar at the back and then something coming forward, just to keep most of the shape. These hinges shouldn't have too many bricks weighing on them. I will have to find out how I can fill in the gaps before them, but that is gonna be the fun of today. So that's how big the bongo is gonna be. And hopefully you can see now why the minifigure bongo is gonna be basically everything in this mock. As I said, there's gonna be a bunch of sea life and that around it as well. And the towel will definitely be hanging over to the minifigure. So actually, the bongo will be going this way around, but it's slowly coming to life. And again, I'm really enjoying the progress I'm making. So far, so good. We are on track to finish this by the end of the month. And hopefully today I'll have the frame built. It will be sturdy enough to hold, well, to hold its own weight, hopefully. But I'm sure we'll probably have to break it apart and rebuild it at some point this video. So I will return when I have built the first iteration of the frame and hopefully it's strong enough to last out this series. And if you are still watching, thank you so much for the support. Don't forget to drop a like and also to subscribe for more awesome content as this, as it's your support that makes me continue building these core mocks. And four days down, we are making a ton of progress because as you can see, the bongo shape is really coming to life. So this is what it was roughly this morning. And now it's taken its shape. It's nice and sturdy. And you can see I've even started to put the anchor on the front, which I'm quite happy with that design. It's enclosed it. If I can put another one by two on top, I can then close it up inside the build and just make it look a bit more fixed. Now I haven't moved the hinges that will be a job for tomorrow. But as you can see, the hinges do line up nearly perfectly with the ship. In fact, this area around here is good enough for Lego. This part, I'm not exactly amazed with, but I'm happy that I've got it looking the way it does. There's no angle I could have had it without having to actually change the angle of the hinge so that that can be flush. But I think it's close enough and we'll just have to see when I start building. Perhaps I can have a few more angles on top just to really close it in properly. But I do have the free seats there and decided to build them a little lower than the rest of the bongo because I think we've got like storage areas left and right, probably some tanks of some sort at the back. And I know you can get seats in all of them. I think there was Legends or somewhere where each of them had their own seats. But I like the way that I've built it. 
I did use a ton of Technic. This is more or less all from The Force Awakens Millennium Falcon. So thank you to that set for giving me all this Technic. But it does indeed hold its weight. Will it hold the weight of the rest of the builds and rest of the pieces that we stack on? Well, only time will tell. But as I say, this is the sort of first final draft of the framework for it. And there is a massive hole there. I don't really know what to do with that yet. I'll probably just end up adding slopes. But that will be a whole day dedicated to the underside. So far, the shape is there. So I'm quite happy with how it is. So as I said, tomorrow, I hope to round off the video by adding the hinges onto the top and just probably adding a few slopes, seeing what I need to buy. That's the main thing. I know I don't have enough slopes to cover the whole of this, and I'm not sure what sort of slopes I'll probably need the hinged ones to go on there. That's the big thing that I'll be purchasing. The rest of the ship I can do with different slopes and all of that. And the cockpits will be interesting. Again, hopefully I got the pieces for that. I've got a few different domes that I've got to try out, and I guess we'll see about that too. But the big thing is the slopes on the side. So hopefully tomorrow I'll know what I roughly want to order, and then that's how I'll start off next week's video. But so far, it's looking really, really cool. I haven't added anything for the towel, even though there is like an engine block before the towel, but that is because I want the towel to spin. And because there is some Technic gaps on the back here, it means that I can add a Technic pin and build it off of that. How secure it will be? Well, we'll have to wait and find out, but there are some secure Technic mechanisms I'm sure I can put to use there. If you have any ideas on how I can get a nice secure towel coming out, perhaps I can even use some of the deeper axles because I've got a few studs back here. Definitely let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know how you think this is going once you finish the video because I'm very happy with how it is so far. As I said, tomorrow's big thing is getting these hinges up and just fixing that in place because I'm not quite sure if I'm going to need to add a few plates between them or if I can run the hinges along here, and then it will just be adding the slopes and seeing what we need. So that will be all for today. Of course, there is one more day left of this video to update the bongo, but I'm happy with how it's going so far, especially now that we've got some seats and you can somewhat picture it as the image I showed off yesterday. So I'm very happy with the progress so far. And now, Let's take a look at what I'm going to do the final day of this first week. Hello there and welcome to the final day of this first video. I've got to say I'm having so much fun building this bongo so far. So I think it's safe to say I definitely will be continuing this on into May. And you can slowly see the effects that I guess this mock has on me because the first one was quite easy until it got to all of these studs. The studs were a nightmare, but I do have my brand new tool that I get to use for this mock. Actually, I did use it in putting down the base plates and it was much, much easier than trying to do it by hand. It just saves you trying to press on your fingers. But today we sort of finished the frame, finished the outline of the build. And basically the point of today is to see what pieces I might need to buy, which I'm definitely gonna have to buy some slopes. I actually have them all on my desk. As you can see, I have all of the slopes I think I will need. These are all for the underside. And then I've got a few of these pieces here, which if I can move the bongo out of the way, they'll be going in the corners and hopefully I can make them line up to some degree. It'll be very interesting trying that out, but I don't have many gray slopes. I have a few probably bluish colors that I can whack on the side here as well, but I think I'm definitely gonna need to make a purchase. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's just here. I also would probably be sloping this off with bricks, actually. I feel like it'd probably be a harder slope at the back if I don't make it flat, but that was, I think it was nine slopes on the front. I probably have about nine grey ones in this whole drawer. So I will be trying to make it look a bit more presentable. And of course, we've got to stay within these regions that I've marked out the furthest forward being the anchor at the front. So I don't know what I'll do for this front bit. I might use the similar slopes that I've used there, which obviously will save me needing the two by two slopes. And hopefully today we can do a bit more of the interior. I know I hadn't planned that till tomorrow, but I just would like to know whereabouts these bubbles would go after all it's the tri bubble and i've only really started work on one so that is my aim for today of course you'll see it in a few minutes but i'm going to be working on this 
throughout the day, so I'm not quite sure how many updates there will be, but I will, of course, let you know. Probably after I've done the slopes, I'll do a quick update and then one at the end of the day. So I hope you're enjoying this video and let's have a look at what I've got done. So as you can see, my desk is quite a mess. I've tried out a few different combinations and actually there is some bad news. I've sort of had enough slopes to slope the whole thing off. I only actually needed eight of these two by two slopes here and I had 16 in my drawer. So I might still order a few, but I don't think at this stage I do need to order anything. So we'll see later on today how I'm going about doing the cockpits and such to see what I actually will need to order because I still do want to make an order just for a few parts even outside of this mock. But any way I can relate it to the mock and include it in this video is of course helpful. But as you can see, it starts off very, very shallow. I have actually used two slopes that back onto each other and then slowly tried different techniques to thicken it. We'll take a look at the underside in a minute, but you can see I've got some slopes and the one and a half plates. We've got some more of these two by two angle plates. And then of course, we've got some snot plates and snot panels that allow me to get the green light on the side, which looks really cool. The blue does build up and it goes from this thinnest part, which is actually just one of the shorter brackets, not quite these brackets, but one of the shorter ones put on the side with a one by two gray slope. So if I were to flip it and I'm currently using one of my drawers to hold it up because it allows me to get to both sides of the wing very, very well. But as you can see, I've mostly mimicked it on the other side. I haven't quite done the far panel work because I don't quite like how it's hanging in there. I do want to reinforce this underside somehow. So I'll probably whack a two by four somewhere across this to support it all. And then I'll probably end up plating off the rest of it just like the middle plates here. But as you can see, we've got some underside slopes. We've got some of these little buttons that go on the back. And then we've got the bracket work here, which I can pop off not so easily. Just to show you, it is just a one by two wedge on a bracket, and that holds both of these slopes together. So I'm quite happy with all the different techniques that I've gone with. We've then got this slope at the back to widen the build just a little bit. I don't know how I'm gonna get the gradual slopes going up the building. Perhaps I'll just do that and whack a few slopes here and there to make it look a little bit better than it does. But I'm very happy with how it is. As you can see, it does hold up even with all the wedge plates and all the different hinges and brackets on the front. It's quite a strong model. And with this Technic at the back, what I might do is add probably another plate on top and another Technic brick. And then when my camera will focus, I'll probably whack another Technic brick or so, a few plates above that just so I can really build in some structure for the tower. Make sure the tower doesn't start bowing, bending, or falling off in any way. So the rest of today, now that I've done that, is securing this underside of the corner here, and then getting the stripes along, seeing what I wanna do for the cockpit, because the cockpit is actually split up into three section itself. So technically it's not a tri-bubble, it's a five-bubble, but I guess that doesn't sound as cool because each of the pilots have their own little bubble and then we have the bigger one over the top. Now, I did remember that I have the giant window piece for the Razor Crest. I don't remember how that split up, so I might try that for the front one and then I can always add just some dishes to the back, but it's making them look like little bubbles that I think is gonna be the hardest part. So I'm gonna give that a shot and then we've got some area behind, I think that's Qui-Gon seat, to put some other interior details. We've got some space at the front for control panels. And overall, I'm liking the way this is going. So there will be one final update for today. And then I guess next week is where it really comes together. This is just the framework for this mock. So I hope you've been enjoying the series, well, the first week so far, because it's definitely coming together a lot quicker than I like, but I still will be making a order on probably Brick Owl because I did get called out in my Brick Owl Bricklink comparison that I haven't made a Brick Owl order yet. So dependent on what the Brick Owl store has that I'll be buying for, I might order a few more slopes just in case we need them for the rest of the build. But I guess 
The next thing you'll see is my progress made later on. So for the end of the first week, it seems weird saying the first week because it's technically only been the first five days, but Monday to Friday, that is sort of the first week. And the first two days was taking apart Mock Esper so that we could start building on this base plate. You can see my desk is a mess. I will try and put all these drawers back tonight. I can't promise it, but hopefully they'll be cleared by tomorrow for the start of the next video. And we've actually got so much done on the bongo today. I'm very, very happy with the progress. I wouldn't say I'm ahead of where I scheduled, but we're definitely on track. If I can move this around and perhaps I should have cleared the drawers first. You can see the first change I've made today is adding a blue stripe to the anchor. That just makes it look so much better. And actually, I didn't mention it in the last clip earlier, but you can see there is some trans orange pieces around it, just like the actual bongo does have. I've done that by putting a one by two on the top and actually the underside of it, if I can flip it over, this is where I drop it, it breaks and I spill a bunch of these dot tiles everywhere. Hopefully not, but you can see on the underside, I've actually used some bracket work and cheese slopes to get them in there and as close to that as possible. I'm very happy with how that's turned out. And well, you can see that's not the only thing that is definitely not staying there. It's not the only thing that we've done. We've started work on this little side pan here. In fact, this side is even better because I've added the little gray swirl that goes along the back. Let me try and hold this steady for you. I've added that gray pattern on the left which looks really cool i've sized out how big i want the bubbles to be i decided that this at the front was way too big so i am going to do three bubbles that size again i have just placed my brick out order my first brick out order but that will be tomorrow's video well it's not going to come out tomorrow that will be next week's video you'll have to wait a week for that and by the time you see it, I will have already got the pieces. So I guess I've got no worries of you trying to buy them all out before I can. But we didn't need any slopes today. The slopes are all there and very, very nice to look at in a row. I like how it just rounds off the ship. But I've also sloped the back side of the bongo. You can see I've just used a bunch of 1x2 slopes to give it a more rounded look. Hopefully we can round it off a little bit on top. And then rounded off the corner here as much as I could without having to redesign the corner at least. So I'm happy with how that's gone. If I can once again put it down and shuffle it around, I can also show you all the slope pieces that I've put at the front. Perhaps the other side will be easier to see. You can see just where there was a gap, I've added some 1x2, some 2x2 slopes, and it's just rounded it off a bit nicely. Some of them you can't see under the plates. Again, the plates I think I hadn't done in the last update. So you can see that all the plates finish off the ship quite nicely. It does mean it's quite a bland bottom, but when it's on display, you're only going to see this half of it. And I think it will look a lot nicer. So I will be removing that cockpit in the middle because I just don't think it works being that big, but we'd still have the seats in. I think I've moved the seats half a stud in since I last showed you. You can see they are on a jumper tile underneath, a nice bright blue one to match with some of the accents on the sub. And I feel like that's just how it looks in the movie. They're just a bit closer into the middle and somewhat covering Qui-Gon in the back. I can't wait to work on the back of it. I think that's pretty much all. The back corners I did build very, very similarly to how I showed you in my first prototype. And we've already seen the slopes and the anchor. I guess that is everything that I've done. I did add a button on the bottom just to stop the plates from splitting. And we've still got this Technic back to attach the towel. So hopefully you enjoyed the first week of working on the bongo. It was definitely, definitely a lot of fun to do. And I cannot wait to get my order of bricks again as i said hopefully that comes by friday if not i will have to go out and find some other cockpit pieces but to be fair we could probably even push that back to the next week but they should arrive on time so the next week we will be working on the bubbles and trying to finish off the ship 
so that we can start work on the base, which is an absolute mess at the minute again. I will tidy this up once I've done recording, but just wanted to let you know where the bongo was and hopefully you've enjoyed this style of video. Once again, if you have, do drop a like and subscribe for more awesome Star Wars mocks coming your way, especially minifigure scale. That's going to be a big thing going forward, I think, because you all seem to love it a lot. So thank you so much for watching. Definitely comment your thoughts on this ship so far because I'd love to hear what you have to say. And may the bricks be with you always.